Welcome to Electron Line. In this bridge example, we have to determine which members are on the tension, which ones are on the compression, and the amount of the tension or compression on each of the members. Now, this is a little bit more complicated. There's way more members here. This is called a Pratt bridge because of the way these structures put together. The first thing we should do is determine what the forces are on the endpoints, on the support points. To do that, we can imagine that there's going to be a force pushing back in this direction. Let's call that force at B. We have to label the members. Let's call this A. Let's call this B. Or let's call this C, D, E. We have F, G, and H. Doesn't matter how you label them as long as each of the joints has a letter associated with it so we know how to define the tension and compression and how to define the magnitude of the forces. So using the concept of that sum of the moments about point A must add up to zero, we have the clockwise moments here caused by these three forces and then the counterclockwise moment caused by F sub B. Clockwise is considered negative, so this becomes minus six kilonewtons multiply it times the three meters minus six kilonewtons multiply it times six meters and minus six kilonewtons multiply it times nine meters and that's counterbalanced by this force F sub B multiplied times 12 meters which means that F sub B is equal to when we move all this over to the other side we have 18 and 36, that's 54, and 54, that's 108. That would be 108 kilonewton meters divided by the 12 meters. 12 goes into that. It looks like 9, that would get 9 kilonewtons. So that's the magnitude of the force here, 9 kilonewtons. Once we have that force right there, and assuming, of course, since everything is in symmetry here, we can assume that the force at A must be the same. So a force at A must also be 9 kilonewtons because the bridge structure here is a perfect symmetry. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at this joint right here and we're going to add up the three forces acting on that. Now notice since this is being pulled in this direction and this is being pushed in this direction, this must be in hmm, compression. So let's call this compression right here. And this must be in tension because if this was not connected here and this force pushes up in this direction, this will swing open. So this is keeping that from doing that. That means this must be under tension. Then if we look at this joint right here, if this is under tension, meaning that the force is, being, is acting in this direction, that means this member must be under tension as well. And since we have perfect symmetry on here, this must be under tension, this must be under tension, and this must be under compression. So now we're going to go ahead and add up these three forces together in a triangular shape. We have the force at B in this direction. Tension means we have a force acting in this direction. Compression means that there's a force pushing back in this direction. And then we have a force of tension in this direction. Here we have F sub B, which is 9 kilonewtons. Here we have the force going from H to B. And here we have the force going from E to B. How do we find HB and EB? Well, the way to do that is to realize that we have a 3, 4, 5 triangle. If this is 3, this is 4, and this is 5, we then know that the magnitude of the forces must be proportional to the lengths of those members, which means we can say that 9 kilonewtons divided by 4 equals HB divided by 5, which is equal to EB divided by 3. In this case, we can say that the member HB is equal to 9 kilonewtons times 5 divided by 4. That's 5 fourths times 9. 45 divided by 4 equals 11.25 kilonewtons. And EB is equal to 9 kilonewtons times 3 divided by 4, 3 quarters by 4, which is 6.75 kilonewtons. Let's go ahead and plug that in here. So this member here is at 11.25 kilonewtons, 
and this member right here is at 6.75 kilonewtons. Now, take a look here. If we take a look at this joint right here, we can see we only have two forces in a vertical direction and two forces in a horizontal direction, which means that this force must equal this force, otherwise they cannot cancel each other out. That means we have to have a 6.75 newton force here, and because of perfect symmetry, we can have, oop, kilonewton, I'm missing a K here, kilonewton. That means that here we also have a 6.75 kilonewton force and a 6.75 kilonewton force. Also due to symmetry, that means here we also have an 11.25 kilonewton force on this member. Next, let's take a look at this joint right there. Notice that we probably have forces from F to G and G to H, but we probably don't have any forces between G and D because there's nothing to compensate for it in this direction. If there was a, a force of compression here, then the beam would be pushing up this way and there's nothing to push back. If there was a force of tension, then this beam would pull down in this direction and there would be nothing to pull back. Therefore, we can say that there's zero newtons on this beam right there. Continuing on with the inspection of our beams right here, I'm going to use a different color. Notice if we have six kilonewtons pulling in this direction, that means that there must be six kilonewtons pulling in this direction, and that means this beam must be under tension with the same six kilonewtons here. And because of symmetry, we have six kilonewtons pulling in this direction, there must be tension in this beam and that would be six kilonewtons there as well. So now we have taken care of these three right here, these three right there. Now the only four we have left is these two here and those two over there. What we could probably do is take a look at this joint right here. These must be under tension because if I'm pulling this way, that weight or that force is being supported by these two beams right here, so they're being pulled, so we know that these must be under tension. Now we can look at that in an arrangement. We have a force going this way, that's six kilonewtons. And now we have these two forces, since they're under tension, that means there's a force pulling this way on this joint and a force pulling this way on the joint, which means we have a force going in this direction and a force going in this direction. These two are these two forces on this beam and on that beam. Notice both of those are the tension, so they pull away from the joint in this direction, and that's what these two forces are. And they should add up to a zero net force if we add those three together. If I draw a dashed line across here, I can say that the relative size of these, these members is five. In this direction it would be three, and this would be four, Again, this would be 5, 3, and 4. If we contribute 3, 3 kilonewtons to this portion of the beam and 3 kilonewtons to this portion of the beam, you can see that in the 3, 4, 5 arrangement, we can figure out the tension on this beam and the tension on that beam. We only have to do it once because there's perfect symmetry there. Let me get my black pen back out. So what we're going to do is take a look at one of these triangles. We can say that 3 kilonewtons divided by four is equal to, hmm, I need to name these beams. So this beam would be from D to F. And this beam here would be from D to H. Three kilonewtons divided by four equals DH divided by five, which is equal to DF divided by five. And of course you would get the exact same value for those two. That means that dH is equal to three kilonewtons times five divided by four, that's 15 divided by four, which is 3.75 kilonewtons. Which means this beam here has a tension of 3.75 kilonewtons, and this beam right here has a, this beam right here has a tension of 3.75 kilonewtons. Should have made my bridge a little bit bigger, that gave me a little bit more room to write. In case you're wondering, these four members at the bottom are all at 6.7 kilonewtons. This one is 11 and a quarter. This one is 11 and a quarter. This one here is 6. This one here is 6. This one is 3.75. And this one is 3.75. The only thing left to do is to go ahead and draw 
a sum of forces around there to get, an inf to get information about this beam right here, this member from G to H. Well, this is a compression, this is force going this way, this is a force going this way, that means this beam must be under compression and this beam must be under compression because these beams right here are pushing against this joint and this joint would collapse in this direction if it, was, if it wasn't for these two members. So they're under compression. Now we need to add the forces together. Let me come all the way down here. That one is going to be a little bit more complicated. We have the tension of 6 kilonewtons. Tension means that it's being pulled in this direction. So I have a force of 6 kilonewtons pulling in this direction. We have a compression that means being pushed in this direction of 11.25 kilonewtons. This is 11.25 kilonewtons. We have a force in this direction that would be 3.75, it's under tension. Tension means it's being pulled this direction, so we have a force in this direction of 3.75 kilonewtons. So now we've taken care of this member, we've taken care of this member, we've taken care of this member, and now we have one more member over here. We have compression pushing in this direction, and that's from, this is from G to H. We don't know what the strength, what the magnitude of that force is. That's the only one that's not known. Now you can see that this component will be, cancel, will be canceled out by the X component of this member and the X component of this member. So we need to find out what these are equal to. The sum of those two must equal the magnitude of GH. What about the angle? Let's see here. If this is a 3, 4, 5 angle, if we take a triangle, and this is 5, this is 3, and this is 4, and notice that we have this angle right here. This angle can be found by taking the arctangent of 4 divided by 3. So we take 4 divided by 3, and we take the arctangent of that, and that would be 53.13 degrees. This is 53.13 degrees. And same in this direction, because we have the beam coming down this way. So we have this angle right here. Now we want to get come down for this angle. That must also be a 53.13 degree angle, and a 53.13 degree angle, which means I cannot find the horizontal components of this force and this force together must equal the GH force over there. So the GH must therefore be equal to 11 0.25 kilonewtons times the cosine of 53.13 degrees, which is 0.6, plus the 3.75 kilonewtons times the cosine of 53.13 degrees, which means that if I add these together, I have 15 kilonewtons times the cosine of 53.13 degrees, which is equal to 15 kilonewtons times 0 0.6, which is equal to 9 kilonewtons, which means that the force on G to H must be 9 kilonewtons, which means that the force here must also be 9 kilonewtons. And now we have all the members taken care of. You can see now that the four that are under tension is 1, 2, 3, 4. There's no force on the middle beam right here. All the other beams are, well, no, these are all under tension as well. I didn't write that down, did I? All these members here must also be under tension. These four members at the bottom, I have written it there. I guess I have written it there in black. And then the ones that are on compression are the two up here and the two down here. And that's it. So this one is on the compression, that one's on the compression, and these two up here. All the other ones are under tension, holding the weight pulling down on it. And magnitude-wise, notice that these are 11.25. The ones on top are 9 kilonewtons. These are 3.75, and each one of these is 6.75 kilonewtons. And that's the final, that's the, the total breakdown of all the forces, and what, which ones are under compression, and which ones are under tension. And that's how that's done.